Hello everyone, and welcome to another Honkai Star Rail video. It's been a while since I've made a Honkai Star Rail character review video, but I figured now would be a good time to feature everyone's favorite pink care protagonist, March 7th. After all, she is one of the Raid Up 4 Star characters on Imbibiter Lunane's banner, and I'm sure most of you have already pulled a couple copies of her. <sighs> including myself. I just expect to get a bunch of marches. It's so I give up. I lost. Alright, March, you win. You have the oh, right God! <laughs> In March 7th's character review video, I'll be covering her pros and cons, abilities, major traces, eidolons, build paths, light cone options, relic sets and stats, and finally end things off with some of her best team compositions. Okay, let's begin. I'm gonna start off with her pros. Her first pro is that you get her for free, and this is very early on in the game. And she will be essential in surviving the early game content. For her next pro, she's low investment. You do not need to put a lot of your resources into March 7th in order to make her work. She does not require the best relics, and only her skill needs any trace investments. You can completely ignore leveling any of her other abilities if you choose to do so. Her next pro is that she has a massive single target shield. And it can last up to three turns, four with her second major trace. It's very useful for mitigating damage and can draw aggro towards or away from your allies. Her next pro and probably one of her most important part of her kits is that she has a debuff dispel. And this can be unlocked with her first major trace. It will be essential for your early and mid game progression and can make a lot of difficult enemies much easier to deal with. And finally for her last pro, she has an AoE Freeze, which is a pretty unique part of March 7th's kit and can provide some extra safety for your team against certain situations or enemies. Alright, now let's move on to her cons. Her first con is that she falls off later on in the game. This is mainly due to her lacking any sort of damage and the difficulty of her to solo sustain her team. It's possible, but will require more skill points and is very difficult. March 7th often needs to be paired with a healer or another shielder like the Fire MC. With these two slots filled with defensive supports, your remainder two slots only allow for one main DPS and one offensive support or sub DPS. This therefore could result in lower damage output than what is needed to fully clear the end game content like the Memory of Chaos. This next con is what annoys most people, including myself. It is her random RNG. Even with March 7th shield and high taunt value, enemies are not guaranteed to attack your desired target. I'm sure most of you have already seen the March 7th and Ting Young memes. And her low base chance to freeze enemies on her ultimate can also be annoying as well. Which brings me to her last con. It's that she's useless against ice enemies. A lot of March 7th's value comes from her ability to freeze multiple enemies. Without it, she loses quite a bit of value for her team. Because of this, I wouldn't really recommend bringing her to fights with enemies immune to freeze. That is also why I have invested into the Fire Trailblazer for these particular situations where March 7th isn't exactly the best option. Alright, now let's move on to her abilities. Starting off with her basic attack, it just deals single target ice damage and is used in between her skill as part of her rotation in order to generate skill points for your team. As for her skill, it provides a single target shield with defense scaling that lasts for 3 turns. It also increases the target's taunt value greatly if they are healthy enough. A very helpful skill that allows March 7th to absorb damage or protect her allies from potential threats. Now for her ultimate, it has a moderate energy cost of 120 and deals AoE ice damage scaling off of March 7th's attack with a 50% chance of freezing enemies. Frozen enemies will take additional ice damage at the start of their turn, a very low base chance to freeze, but it can be further increased with effect hit rate and one of her major traces. A very useful ultimate that can be used for its utility and defensive capabilities. Alright, moving on to her talent. March 7th will counterattack enemies that hit shielded allies, including herself, and deal ice damage scaled off her attack. She can counterattack up to two times each turn. Her talent really does help out March to break opponents that are weak to ice, and also aids in her energy regeneration in order for her to cast her ultimate more often. 
Alright, and finally we have her technique. Immediately attacks the enemy after entering battle. There is a 100% base chance to freeze a random enemy for one turn. While frozen, the enemy cannot take action and will take additional ice damage equal to 50% of March 7th's attack at the beginning of each turn. Uh, it's definitely not the best technique to start a battle with, but it's still usable if you don't have any better options. Alright, now let's talk about our major traces. Her first major trace allows her skill to remove one debuff from an ally. This is pretty much a must-have, and it will help against very annoying enemies with nasty debuffs. As for her second major trace, the duration of the shield generated from skill is extended for one turn. Her shield already lasts for three turns, so this major trace, although nice to have, is optional. As you can see, I haven't unlocked it yet. And for her third and final major trace, increases ultimate base chance to freeze enemies by 15%, for a total base chance of 65%. Uh, she's still going to need a 157 effect hit rate to guarantee the freeze against endgame enemies, which is nearly impossible and not worth aiming for. This third major trace might be worth unlocking if you have the spare resources, otherwise it's also optional. I haven't unlocked it myself just because I believe the trace material and credits aren't really worth it at the moment for me. As for skill priority, pretty much only her skill is the one you should be leveling up. But if you insist on investing more into your March 7th, then I guess you can prioritize her talent next, followed by her ultimate, and then her basic attack. As for which major traces to prioritize, I would definitely go for her first major trace immediately. Then if you want the extra base chance to freeze, you can go for her third major trace, followed by her second major trace. All right. Now let's go over her Eidolons. For her Eidolon 1, every time March 7th's ultimate freezes a target, she regenerates 6 energy. A great Eidolon 1, especially against multiple enemies, it has the potential to regenerate enough energy for more frequent ultimates, resulting in constant freezes. As for her Eidolon 2, upon entering battle grants a shield equal to 24% of March 7th's defense, plus 320 to an ally with the lowest HP percentage, lasting for three turns. The shield provided from this Eidolon is definitely smaller than the one provided from her skill, but it can still protect your weakest ally from damage and can potentially even save you some skill points for the first few turns. Her Eidolon 3 gives her ultimate two levels and her basic attack one level. Rather useless, you won't even notice the damage difference. For her Eidolon 4, the talent counter effect can be triggered one more time in each turn. The damage dealt by the counter increases by an amount equal to 30% of March 7th's defense. This is by far her strongest Eidolon in my opinion, which allows for more toughness break and energy regeneration for her ultimate. Her Eidolon 5 gives her skill and talent 2 levels. This in my opinion is her last major power spike. Both her skill and talent are the strongest parts of her kit. And finally, we end things off with her Eidolon 6. Allies under the protection of the shield granted by the skill restores HP equal to 4% of their max HP plus 106 at the beginning of each turn. This insignificant amount of healing will not be enough to sustain your entire team. So in my opinion, when compared to some of her other Eidolons, her Eidolon 6 is rather underwhelming. Okay, moving on. Now I'm going to talk about two different build paths you can choose when building your March 7th. The first build path is that of a tank, and my preferred choice. For this build path, March 7th wants to shield herself the majority of the time, unless obviously if an ally is hit, or if you need the extra safety precautions for certain characters like Yang Ching. The whole purpose of this build is to draw aggro away from your other allies, thanks to the increased taunt value from her own shield, and the fact that March 7th is a preservation path character, and you can even increase this further by equipping some specific Lycones, which I will talk about later in the video. This build will also allow March to soak quite a bit of damage, even if her shield is broken, which will rarely happen, March 7th can still soak a ton of damage, especially if you run a defense percent planar sphere and link rope, which I do recommend for this particular build path. The second build path is that of a defensive support. For this build path, you want to be shielding your allies instead for their protection and the additional energy regeneration when they are hit. On top of that, you'll also be able to spam your ultimate more often, because with this build path, you'll be running an energy regeneration link rope, 
which in turn allows you to cast your ultimate more often, resulting in more consistent freezes. So overall for this build path, your March 7th has both defensive capabilities and utility. Alright, next I'm going to talk about her Lycone options, starting off with her best Lycone options. Her best Lycone option, in my opinion, is Moment of Victory. It provides defense percent, effect hit rate, and increases the taunt value, all of which March 7th wants. That is, of course, unless you are going down the defensive support build path, then this next Lycone might be a better option. And the next best in slot Lycone, in my opinion, is Day 1 of My New Life. This Lycone provides defense percent and damage resist for all your allies. This is overall a very solid Lycone that provides protection for both March 7th and her allies. And it gets even stronger if you get lucky enough to pull copies of it to superimpose it to higher levels. Now I'm going to talk about some other Lycone options. Another decent Lycone option for March 7th is Trend of the Universal Market. This Lycone will provide defense percent and a chance to apply a burn DOT that scales off the wearer's defense stat whenever they are attacked. March likes the defense percent boost. The extra bit of burn DOT is fine, but you won't really notice a huge spike in damage output. So if you happen to pull this Lycone from the gacha, it's a viable option. Another really similar Lycone option is This Is Me. This is actually one of the Battle Pass Lycone options. It also provides defense percent and also increases damage dealt by the wearer whenever they cast their ultimate, scaled off their defense percent stat as well. So like I said before, a very similar type of Lycone to that of Trend of the Universal Market, both in stats and usage. So if you bought the Battle Pass, this is definitely an available option. And finally, let's talk about Landau's choice. It's going to increase the taunt value and reduces damage taken by the wearer. This is basically a much weaker version of Moment of Victory. I'd only recommend using this Lycone if you are going down the tank build path. Otherwise, there are definitely better Lycone options available. And I'm going to finish off this section by talking about some of the free-to-play Lycone options available. The first free-to-play option available for free-to-play players is Amber, a 3-star Lycone. It basically is just going to provide a bunch of defense percent. It's easy to obtain and superimpose. However, because of its low base stats, I would not recommend fully investing into it. Just use it as a temporary Lycone placeholder until you're able to pull a better preservation Lycone. For the next free-to-play Lycone option, we have We Are Wildfire. This Lycone is going to reduce the damage dealt to all allies for the first 5 turns, and also heals them a bit when the battle begins. This Lycone is also easy to obtain and superimpose, but once again, the ability of this Lycone is rather underwhelming, especially in longer drawn out fights, which you will encounter in the later game. So just like Amber, I would not recommend fully investing into it, just simply use it as a temporary Lycone placeholder until you can pull a better one. And the last free-to-play Lycone option available is Texture of Memories from Herda Shop. It's going to provide effect resistance and a potential HP scaling shield or damage reduction. Like the other free-to-play Lycone options available, it's fairly easy to obtain and superimpose, although it might take some time since there are many other strong Lycone options in Herda's shop. I may have underrated this Lycone in the past, and now with the new Broken Keel Planar Ornaments set, I can see this Lycone being a viable option for many future preservation characters. So if you have the spare Herda Bonds and are looking into long-term value, this Lycone might be worth investing into and equipping on your March 7th. The stat it provides might not suit her the best, but you can always swap to a better suiting Lycone later on and instead equip this Lycone on another future preservation character. Okay, now let's talk about her relics. Starting off with her recommended relic sets. Her best in slot set for sure is going to be the Knight of Purity Palace set. Not only does it provide defense percent for March 7th to scale her shields and allow her to be more tankier, it also increases the max damage that can be absorbed by the shield created by March 7th. So needless to say, whether it's March 7th, the Fire Trailblazer, or Jepard, the four-piece set is definitely going to be the best in slot for all of them. However, if you're unable to make a four-piece Knight of the Purity Palace set, or the pieces you have aren't that great, you also have the option of running a two-piece Knight of the Purity Palace set, and a two-piece Messenger Traversing Hackerspace set for the extra speed bonus. 
After all, speed is a very important stat for any supporting character, so this is also another viable option that you have. This two-piece, two-piece combo might actually be better if your March's shield is already so strong to the point where you never see it breaking. So you would rather have the speed provided by this two-piece set rather than the extra damage absorption for her shields from the four-piece Knight of the Purity Palace set. As for the recommended Planar ornament sets, the best one for her obviously is going to be Bellabog of the Architects. There's just one issue with this set. It's not very Trailblaze power efficient. This is because the two sets available in that particular world are not as universally useful as some of the other simulated universe world sets. But regardless, the extra defense provided by this set will definitely help your March 7th and you get even more defense percent if her effect hit rate is above 50%. My next recommended planar ornament set will be Broken Keel. It's going to provide March 7th with some effect resist, and after 30% effect resist, it'll provide all allies with a crit damage boost. This is overall a very strong supporting set, and is relatively easy to farm, since the two sets in World 7 are fairly universally useful. And finally, for the last recommended planar ornament set, it's the Fleet of the Ageless set, which in my opinion has been a little bit power crept by the Broken Keel set, but it's still definitely usable, especially on characters that scale off max HP, which March 7th doesn't. But if you already have good pieces that fit March 7th, then by all means, this is not a terrible set to put on her, as long as you're able to hit the 120 speed threshold. All right, now let's talk about her Relic main stats. Starting off with her body piece, which you want effect hit rate percentage. Even though she needs 157% effect hit rate to guarantee the freeze against endgame enemies, I wouldn't bother with it as long as you're able to meet the 50% effect hit rate threshold to activate the Bellabog of the Architect set, that's more than enough. As for her feet, you always want speed. Speed is the most important stat in any supporting character. For her planar sphere, you want defense percent for more durability and stronger shields. For her link rope, it's a choice between defense percent or energy regeneration rate. Depending on which build path you went down, the tank path obviously wants defense percent and the defensive support would like energy regeneration rate for more frequent ultimates. As for her relic substats, you definitely want to prioritize speed the most. After that, prioritize both defense percent and effect hit rate equally. After that, you want to prioritize HP% percent and effect resist equally. Unless you are running the broken keel set, then prioritize effect resist over HP%. Percent. All right, now let's finally talk about some team compositions. The first team comp I'm going to talk about is the free to play team comp, which will feature your main DPS. Here I have Dan Hung, a sub DPS or offensive support. Here I have Serval as the sub DPS, Natasha who is your healer, and of course, March 7th, who is your tank or defensive support. And generally, of course, you want to place March 7th at the edge, since she has the highest taunt value and will be most likely hit, unless she shields one of her allies. This is a very standard team composition that can help you progress through the early and mid game. It covers both single target and AoE, and has plenty of sustain and damage mitigation. The next team composition I like to call Rock Solid. This will compose of your main DPS, here I have Zile, Natasha is the healer, of course there's March 7th as the defensive support and tank, and another preservation character, most likely the fire main character. The purpose of this team comp is to basically try and survive. This will mostly be used in the early to mid game, especially in simulated universe, early on when you don't have enough buffs and your characters aren't built up to a certain degree. You can use this team composition to abuse the preservation path that takes advantage of the shields generated by both the Fire MC and March 7th. There is one downside to this team comp, however, is that it takes a very long time to clear the content you're doing. Because, I mean, you have three defensive characters and only one damage dealer. I remember in my first fight with Japard in the Simulator Universe, I actually even ran Bailu instead of Natasha just for the extra healing and free revive. If you guys have the time and patience, this is definitely a team composition worth running early on when you have trouble surviving and clearing the content. The next team composition is one that features Clara as the main DPS. 
In this team comp, you'll have your offensive support to the left. It can be Ting Young, Asta, whatever you have. Your healer, whether it's Natasha, Bailu, or Luocha. Followed by Clara, who I actually don't own, so pretend this hook right here is Clara. And finally, March 7th at the far right. And you want to be placing March 7th close to Clara at the edge of your team. This way, if the enemy has a cleave attack, whether it hits Clara or March 7th, this will allow Clara to counterattack along with March 7th as well. And this has got to be one of March 7th's best team compositions. She really does synergize really well with Clara. Not only does it boost Clara's defensive capabilities, but it also boosts her damage as well. All right, and finally, we have a team composition featuring Yang Ching as the main DPS. In this team comp, obviously we're gonna have Yang Ching, a offensive support or debuffer. Here I have Pela as the debuffer for defense shred. Your healer, which I have Bailu, you can use Natasha or Luocha. And of course, March 7th again at the far right. For this particular team composition, you want your March 7th to either be equipping Landau's Choice or Moment of Victory for the increased aggro value. And for the extra safety, just so Yang Ching doesn't get hit and lose his buffs, you still want to shield him with March 7th Shield. This way, whether the enemy hits Yang Ching when he's shielded or if they hit March 7th, you're guaranteed that Yang Ching won't lose his buffs. Of course, the better version of this team would be just to have Jepard instead of March 7th. However, March does have her own benefits and advantages. Her shield can increase the chance of Yang Ching getting hit and therefore allows him to regenerate more energy. And she also has an AoE freeze, which Jepard does not have. So she provides some different types of defensive utility than Jepard. Alright guys, well that's going to be it for this Honkai Star Rail character review video. If you guys have any questions or anything to add, please post them in the comments section below. And if you found this video helpful, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe. But other than that, I'll see you guys in the next Honkai Star Rail video. Peace.